what we are going to do in this tutorial right now is remove the potting material here. Now I just want to illustrate something very quickly here. It's imperative that you're very careful when you're removing the potting material because as you can see there this circuit board is just inside the bottom of the tire pressure sensor and you do not want to score it up with your with your screwdrivers when you're disassembling it. We can see the potting material here. This is what we want to remove. I'm going to take my screwdrivers here and take the smallest one. I'm just going to take the edge and poke a small hole in there. And just start picking it out. Another way you can pick this material out is with your fingernail. It can become a little uncomfortable, but it's definitely less chance of scoring the circuit board. As you can see, I just dug that chunk out right there with my index finger. The next thing that you're going to need to do is dig down deep into the sensor along the two sides of the sensor because there is a small gap in here and we need to break up the potting material on those sides and you're just gonna you can just push down and pick it out literally and eventually you'll be able to get to a point where you can kind of work your screwdriver back and forth and clean that out now this lower corner here be careful because there's a small rubber diaphragm in there that allows air to come in and out of the sensor. You can see the hole for it on the other side and get the pressure measurement. So you're not going to want to poke that too hard, but these other sides, the left and right side, are okay to just dig at pretty hard. Um, also be careful, there's a small retaining clip in the plastic case here and here. So I'm going to work at that here for a little bit. Don't rush this. You don't want to score up the board or do anything like that. Now the trick is to desolder the battery leads here and here from the circuit board and desolder this mounting screw from the circuit board right there there and there. Then what we can do is we can pop the circuit board out. So what I've got here is a soldering iron. I have my trusty soldering braid and we're going to use the two to desolder these items. So we have desoldered the battery leads and mounting screw from the back side of the circuit board. Now we need to remove the mounting screw. Okay, so the screw is coming out. Now we've got the screw removed. Now we're going to bake the sensor for 15 minutes so that we can soften up the potting material and pop the circuit board out of the housing. So I've preheated my oven here and we're going to place the sensor in the middle rack. Then we'll set our timer for 15 minutes. We're going to take our flathead screwdriver and we're going to pry it into the side of the board and slowly work it out. And there we go. We've now removed the circuit board. But the battery and a bunch of potting material remain inside the sensor housing. So we're going to dig that all out. You want to be very careful about this diaphragm in the lower corner though. You can see on the other side where it breathes through, that's, that's where the sensor takes its readings, so you don't want to damage that. A 
Okay, so I've pretty well cleaned out the sensor housing. We're gonna have to clean off some of this potting material from the back side of the circuit board. It's very thick and it makes it difficult for the new battery to fit into the case again easily, into the sensor again easily, so we need to pare it down a little, especially in the area where you see the battery indent. The best thing to do is to start by just picking at it with your fingernail or your little screwdriver and try to remove, remove it. And you, remember, you have to be very, very, very careful about this because the most sensitive pieces in the entire sensor are underneath this potting material. I've also got my Dremel tool here with a wire brush attachment. That can work very well for brushing off some of this potting material. You'll want to make sure that it's on the lowest setting. You don't want to overdo this. You want to take a little bit off at a time and very gently. Other things that you can use, there's a uh, sanding disc tool for Dremel tools. That works good. You could use a nail file, um, anything to grind down a little bit of this potting material. So let's get started here. Now you don't have to grind all the way through it. You're just trying to create some clearance. So pay special attention to the area where you saw the battery indent. That's where you'll get the biggest bang for your buck when you're grinding this material down. Uh, on the edges of the board, this side here and this other side, you'll want to be very, very careful because there's some sensitive components there. Okay, I've ground this board down considerably. So it's much flatter than it used to be. One thing that we should do before going on is a really quick dry test of the fit. This is the old battery. I just stuck that back in there. And let's throw the circuit board back in and see if it'll clip shut. And sure enough it does, so that's a very good sign. We need to solder new electrical leads to the circuit board and these will eventually attach to the battery to supply power to the tire pressure sensor electronics. What I've done here is I've got two wires. These are very small gauge wires. You can pick them up at Radio Shack. I actually like to use different colors. Uh, the black is my negative lead. The red is my positive lead. This right here is your negative lead, closest to the silver can. Opposite that is the positive lead. So now I've attached both my negative and positive leads to the circuit board. So I like to pot the sides of the battery to um, avoid the chance of shorting out the battery when we install it. This is what I use for potting material. Some people use RTV sealant, but I like to use this uh, brush on electrical tape. Um, there's several different varieties of it, but this is the one I found at Ace Hardware the other day. And all I'm gonna do is I'm going to paint the sides of the battery. I like to put a, a rag down too, as you can tell. So there it is. We'll just let that dry up. It'll take a little while. The potting material, the non-conductive glue, has set up on the edges of the battery. So we're going to want to connect the negative side first, so that way we can simply just fold it over and put it together. So I'm going to cut this is my uh, wire cutting and stripping tool. I'm going to cut the negative lead to length. And I kind of want it to be 
In the middle here where I ground that down so I got some space, you're going to have to use your judgment here. So I'm going to cut it about right there. Cut it off. I'm going to strip it so I have plenty of uh, lead to get my electrical connection. Now it's time to put on my wire glue. This is the conductive glue that will form the electrical connection for the negative lead. And um, you're going to want to allow this ample time to set up. It could take, you know, if you leave it overnight, that's great. The longer the better. The electrical wire glue has dried it on the negative side of the battery, so I like to put a little of my potting material, the brush on electrical tape, non-conductive glue, on top of that uh, wire glue so that it doesn't short anything out when we put the sensor back together. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully fold this over on top of the circuit board. So what you're looking at here is the positive side of the battery and then I'm going to put the positive lead over onto that and we're going to dry test this fit again. So we have a good fit. That's, that's really good news. We can continue our work. What we're going to do now is we're going to do the electrical wire glue, the conductive glue, to connect the positive terminal of the battery. Try and make it flat and you don't want it going over the edge of the board or over the edge of the battery. That's bad news because it could short the battery out. So you're going to want to allow that ample time to dry. Um, the longer the better. Uh, the other side I actually let set overnight. Now I'm going to test the board to make sure we have a good connection with the battery and the board's getting power. So I've flipped it over and the terminals we soldered in will provide the electrical connection. This is my multimeter set to volts DC and when I probe it I've got 3.2 volts which is what the battery should have. Now I'm going to install it into the sensor housing again. There's a very very small hole in that little sensor opposite this silver can in the other corner. That hole needs to line up with the hole in the diaphragm. So, Okay, we've got the board inside of the housing now. I'm going to replace the screw at the top by the valve stem. I'm going to do one last sanity check here and see what my voltage is, make sure I didn't disturb anything. Now I'm going to solder that, that screw in there like it used to be when we took it apart. All we have to do now is take our brush on non-conductive electrical uh, glue and fill in the sensor again. We're going to repot it. Kind of, I'm tilting it a little bit here and letting it run down underneath the board. This might take a little while, just take your time. Work it down in there. Okay, I'm just going to let that set for a while. Might have to come back and give it a couple more coats. It's a little wet just yet, and I've actually saved this sticker from the back side. If you're so inclined, you can take that on the last coat and just kind of lay it on there and 